Well, folks, welcome back to your Friday edition of VG News. Today, we just have four stories, but they're all about Nintendo. So, hey, the name of the channel is Nintendo Prime. We're going to bring you the Nintendo stuff here and now because we have a lot of big things to get into. So, I'm not going to make you wait anymore. Let's just dive right in because the first thing is that Nintendo finally announced something worth talking about. That, of course, being brand new titles being added to Nintendo Switch Online. Now, they dropped a nearly two-minute trailer here in the U.S., and the three games that they actually announced here for the United States, anyways, was Wrecking Crew 98, Super R-Type, and the amazing Habareke for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And some people making some jokes about those being considered classics, but hey... That is what it is. Per usual, Japan's lineup features actually a couple of different titles. Instead of the amazing Hebereke, they are getting Battle Toads and Battle Maniacs, which by the way, we already have here in the United States. And this is the more interesting one. Marvelous Mojito to no Takarajima, which I know I butchered that. So here's what it actually means. The game's titled in English, Marvelous Another Treasure which is a really interesting title simply because it was directed by Eiji Aonuma and it took inspiration directly from A Link to the Past and even used the exact same engine. Of course, Switch is region free. So you can make a Japanese account and download the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Japanese app and play the game if you like, although it does not have an English language option. Now, outside of the Eiji Aonuma special here there really isn't a lot of notable games here honestly this is maybe one of the weaker updates but it is really cool that at least in japan they have that ag aonuma game and it kind of gives you an idea of where he came from before he started all of his work on the legend of zelda series so i find that to be rather fascinating you know what's also fascinating discord yes i use discord all the time right we have our own discord server you guys can find a link to it down in the description and Hey, I use it every day, whether it's for certain video game leagues I'm in or other things I'm playing. There's a World of Warcraft server I'm a part of or whether it's obviously for my YouTube channel. Well, Discord is also popularly used for other video game related things such as emulators. And it turns out that two major developers and their emulators were shut down by Discord. Now, all of this comes from an article over at The Verge. And as you're seeing here, it's Quite an interesting take because the emulators that were affected were Suyu and Sudachi that are two spin-offs of the Yuzu emulator. Now Discord did give a public statement from their director of product communications, Kellen Stone, and here's what they told The Verge. Discord responds to and complies with all legal and valid Digital Millennium Copyright Act requests. In this instance, there was also a court-ordered injunction for the takedown of those materials, and we took action in a manner that's consistent with the court order. Now, the developers did provide some images, supposedly, to The Verge, showing that they were only given vague messages from Discord on why they took the actions they did. They aren't actually sure this was a valid DMCA takedown or a violation of IP rights. This is mostly because while well, Nintendo owns the emulator and did get all the copies that were out there destroyed, the problem being that the software was originally open source and provided freely to the public under the GNU public license, and Nintendo didn't actually get that license for the software. Now, they can obviously use it because it's a GNU public license, but they couldn't get that license reneged, and that's because, hey, this didn't actually go to court it was settled and that was not part of the settlement agreement. So from a legal stance, they couldn't really shut it down based on it just being using the code of Yuzu. However, Nintendo can get things legally shut down that advertise and or use their cryptographic keys, firmware, let alone anyone on their server that might've been sharing ROMs. Now, right now, all Nintendo Switch emulators actually require the use of cryptographic keys. And so that is very fascinating because it's a at least here in the United States, a legal gray area on if you're even allowed to have an emulator that uses cryptographic keys. Now you might wonder, well, if Nintendo's going through all this work and hey, the per people who made Suyu actually were United States based, then why are they not going after like Rijunix? And well, the answer for Rijunix is that they're actually located in Brazil and subject to Brazilian law and it might not be as legally gray there. Here it is actually legally gray on if you're even allowed to have software that uses copyrighted cryptographic keys. So 
There is that, regardless of advertising them or linking to them, just being able to use them or requiring their use for your software to function could actually be illegal, but we don't really know because the case that Nintendo had against Yuzu never went to court, but it was Nintendo's strongest legal argument because without those keys, their software just doesn't work. So it is a fascinating thing that would have been, at least just from an interesting perspective, it would have been cool to see that play out in court, but it didn't happen. Now, what's obviously mixed up in here is another emulator. But before we dive in, Suyu might be more at fault here than anyone. And I want to explain because the Suyu developers, <laughs> they dared Nintendo to come after them saying that they had some legal advice that turned out it came from a law student, not an actual lawyer with experience. So in the end, uh, that legal advice might not have been great. And it's kind of funny that that's the route they went. Now, Suyu looks to be completely abandoned. There's a rumor that after the servers got shut down, the developers have now abandoned the project. And I wouldn't really be surprised. I think they literally thought Nintendo wasn't going to do anything to them. Maybe there were a bunch of kids in high school. I don't really know. But what we do have is another emulator involved in this. And that emulator is called Sudachi. That was the other emulator shut down. And we don't know if there's anything Nintendo can do legally or whatever. The developer of this emulator is actually located in Australia. So it'll be those laws that it needs to comply with. But it seems like the developer isn't so upset about the server being shut down. They did put out a tweet where they seem more upset that they're personal account was banned from discord because they used it to talk to their brother and other friends of course i assume you can still talk to your family and hopefully your real friends because you should have ways to contact them beyond discord that being said this is obviously something where i you know there's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo and a lot of gray area don't want to dive too deep into it but hey look if you want to make an emulator for switch one don't be located in the united states and two maybe don't use the code base from yuzu come up with your own code base i know Rajunix is not open source but find a way to make your own stuff right I, i'm just saying if you be, could make those from the ground up you know yuzu and Rajunix could create something from the ground up why can't you guys i'm just throwing that out there that maybe that's the best way to start also maybe don't be located in the united states because Nintendo has shown they will press legal issues in the U.S. simply because it's so legally gray in many areas. All right, now we need to get into something that should be exciting and is like the lead headline topic, but isn't as exciting as it seems and is going to create a longer form conversation. And that is an update surrounding the rumored indie world and specifically the Nintendo Direct that was supposed to happen this month. Now, if you guys remember, it was rumored originally by Pedro Henrique, otherwise known as Brazil Online. Now, this is the person that originally put out into the ether that the Nintendo Switch 2 had an internal delay to 2025 that was then corroborated by Video Game Chronicle, Eurogamer, and even Japanese publication Nikkei. Now, that's fascinating, and that's cool, and that's that report, but... His other report here came shortly thereafter stating that there would be an indie world before a Nintendo Direct and that the Nintendo Direct would happen in April and there would be some sort of Switch 2 reveal or something in June. Now, that was stated back in February and then a couple weeks ago he came out and basically restated that yes, I still have a source telling me there's a Direct happening in April. Okay, so that's neither here nor there. That's interesting. Now, that Nintendo Direct thing was also backed up by Necro Felipe Lima, the owner and basically editor-in-chief of Nintendo Universo, and he said it would be a general Nintendo Direct. Now, why does all of this matter? Well, because he put out a statement yesterday over on a popular Nintendo forum called Family Boards, and here's what he had to say, and we're talking about what Brazil had to say. Hey, everyone. Didn't want to leave you hanging for the entire month, so here I am. You'll remember that the info I had back during the Switch 2 delay week is that we'd have a Direct in April and an Indie World presentation prior to that. I had those talks a couple of days after the Switch 2 discussions, but I now believe that the event info itself was already outdated at that point. I no longer believe we'll get a Direct this month. Apart from one person who heard some rumblings two weeks ago, no one else seems to have heard anything about an April Direct since then when they probably would have at this point. One source in particular that had talked about an April Direct before is now expecting one to happen around the obvious Summer Game Fest time frame, so late May or early June. And then he put an edit in here, maybe even this is wrong, but we will get PlayStation and Xbox events in that time frame at least, which Xbox has already confirmed. 
The indie world seems to have been planned to air pre-game developers conference, but I guess all those plans went out the window immediately as well. Anyway, that's it. The beauty of talking about planned event dates months in advance. Ha ha. I'll catch flack for this, and that's alright, but hopefully that helps people settle back and enjoy the games coming out instead of getting anxious over more announcements for a while. Also, obligatory apologies to anyone who was really looking forward to this due to my earlier info. I've said this before, but I only said anything because I was on cloud 9 that week, and I probably should have restrained myself, ha ha. And Necrofilipe Lima, as far as I can tell on all of his uh, profiles, has yet to make any statements as well, since he was someone who backed this outside of mentioning he got a new job. So congratulations on getting a new full-time job. Now, what I want to throw out there into this ether is, one, this was all rumors in the first place, and rumors are always meant to have significant doubt and you know skepticism. So it's not really shocking that there might not be a direct this month. And I'm saying might not because he's not even saying his sources are telling him there won't be one. His sources are just not telling him anymore that there will be one. I well, well, there's, there's a few little red flags in here that I just don't like, like mentioning that he only talked about all these events back in February because he was on cloud nine. Uh, the news delivered in February was bad news. Like if I had direct information from a source that told me that Switch 2 was going to be pushed into, internally pushed into 2025, I don't know why that would make me excited. If anything, that would actually make me not excited. But then maybe because he gave this information through a podcast and now his podcast got a bunch of attention, maybe that part made him excited as the podcast maybe had boosted views for him compared to prior episodes. And that I can understand a little bit. I too get excited when we have a podcast episode, uh, the Nintendo Prime podcast, when it ends up popping off for more views than usual. So I can get that excitement, but it seems like his excitement was around the information for Switch 2, which didn't seem exciting by the way it seemed kind of off-putting but you know that's whatever that's his reasoning and look he's been a fairly reliable person in the past and this is one of those things where all these insiders i never really doubt that they have real inside information but what we have to remember is that people like brazil even nate the hate and others and pretty much everyone but pioro all their information comes from third-party developers with dev kits and Third-party developers are already second-hand information because Nintendo is the one ultimately deciding when these events are going to happen, when directs are coming, and yes, when Nintendo Switch 2 is going to come out and be revealed. Nintendo decides that. A third-party developer that might be making games for it will be made aware of certain things, but that's already second-hand compared to Nintendo, and then by the time it gets to someone like Brazil who heard it from those third-party developers, he's now third-hand information, and then when you guys hear it from me talking about this stuff, it's now fourth-hand information. So you have to remember in the world of reporting on all this stuff and giving you all the information that when you hear it from me, it's already gone down the pipeline several layers before you even got it out at my YouTube channel. And because of that, it actually just makes it even more unreliable as it were just because of that and that's why we always say rumors you know that are not leaks that can't be verified and there wasn't a lot of people corroborating this stuff just one other person who was also wrong about information in the past about directs so there's no direct this month that now is two things against necro felipe lima and the last two directs so i'm just going to point out that rumors are just not meant to be believed and they are just meant to be fun conversation points. So we are going to continue to cover rumors from people that we find credible, and Brazil is someone that we do find credible. However, you just need to keep this in the back of your mind that until it's officially announced, it doesn't mean anything. Take rumors as more fun conversation points than inherent facts. And if there are rumors that tend to be significantly more reliable than others, such as Tom Henderson at Insider Gaming that's been nailing everything lately, or even Pioro, Obviously, those are things that we could indicate. But for right now, everyone else, whether it's Nate to Hate, Brazil, Necro Felipe, or whoever we cover in the future, just note that, hey, you're supposed to doubt things. That's why it's called a rumor. Now, let's get into our last story here because this was something that just happened this morning or was announced this morning anyways. Nintendo is hiring someone who used to be, and I want to make sure I get his exact role right. He was the PlayStation director of third-party games. Now, he did that for six years, leaving the company in 2019 just before PlayStation 5 marketing was beginning. Now, the person they hired is named Gio Corsi, and we found out because he made the announcement himself publicly on X. He has joined Nintendo's AAA third-party portfolio management crew, according to his post, and he is saying he wants to help great teams bring their amazing games to 
a legendary platform and you know talking about nintendo here now besides working at playstation he had a couple other jobs over the last handful of years one of those was as head of publishing at ilphonic who has made things like killer clowns from outer space and ghostbusters uh, spirits unleashed and then more recently he was the head of commercial at iron galaxy you might have heard of them because they've been involved with a lot of stuff uh killer instinct and rumbleverse of course but then they've also co-developed things like uncharted games and spyro and so many others iron galaxy is actually a pretty big name uh, in the industry especially for co-development reasons now this is generally considered a really good hire for nintendo because it puts geo back in a similar role he was working at playstation and honestly that role is that he brought a lot of games to PlayStation 4 that might not have otherwise been there, whether it was in the West or in Japan from AAA developers. And what Nintendo really needs heading into the next platform are people with experience and relationships with major AAA developer partners so they can convince them to bring their games over. And while already we had heard some rumors and reports that Switch 2 was going to get more third-party support than people might expect towards launch, the exciting thing is bringing someone in with this sort of experience working at PlayStation they already have these big relationships with companies like EA and Square Enix and all of that. And that's just going to increase the likelihood of this person being able to convince them that Nintendo Switch 2 is a platform that their product should release on. So I think that this is just a very good hire by Nintendo. Very smart of them. If you're going to hire someone to help convince third parties to support why not bring on one of the guys with the most experience in the market who's been working with AAA developers for the better part of the last decade? Just saying, this seems like a smart move to me, and I am very, very happy to welcome Geo into the Nintendo employee family. I'm not actually part of that family, so I don't know what I'm welcoming him into exactly. Who do I think I am? Just because Nintendo's in my channel name doesn't mean that... I work for them. In fact, actually, Nintendo could tell me any day now I can't use this anymore. Nintendo, please don't do that to me. I, I, I understand. We have a, a backup plan if you ever yell at me, but please don't yell at me. I love you guys. I love your games. I love what you're doing. I'm really excited for Switch 2. I'm really excited for the next Direct. I'm really, well, okay, I'm not really excited for most of the rest of your lineup this year. So far. So far. You could announce something, though, that might tickle my fancy soon. And that could be exciting. Don't know when that next direct's gonna be. Honestly, today's news is both like exciting and also disappointing and kind of all over the place as we head into the weekend. So everyone, you guys have a lovely weekend. We'll be back with standard videos and who knows, maybe a bonus live stream. Who the heck really knows at this point? We're just here to do our damn job. Catch you guys in the next video.